South Park is easily one of the most violent cartoons of all time, if Kenny dying so frequently isn't enough proof. But he's not the only character that has kicked the bucket. Oh no, there is so much death. Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and these are South Park deaths, gruesome to most gruesome. For this video, we will not be including Kenny's deaths. After all, we have another video dedicated to those. The first category we have today are inanimate object deaths. This is exactly how it sounds. Inanimate objects obviously won't have deaths as gruesome as normal beings, hence why this category is first. The reason why we chose to even include this is because some inanimate objects in South Park seem to have some sentience. We're gonna start with Mr. Twig. In the episode Chef Aid, Mr. Garrison's brief replacement for Mr. Hat is boiled in a pot of water. While being tended to in bed, Garrison discovers that Mr. Twig had been broken in half, with the culprit later found out to be none other than the aforementioned hand puppet. Considering he's just a twig, it should be obvious as to why his death is the least gruesome. It's a stick. We're only into the second entry and are already entering gross territory. Minji and Gary are next. In A Million Little Fibers, Oprah's nether regions, Minji and Gary take hostages outside a bank and ask for demands. Nobody moves, nobody gets hurt. After Tao Li helps the hostages escape, Gary gets shot by a sniper rifle, and Minji kills himself with a gun that was used to threaten the hostages. Continuing with the theme of murderous inanimate objects, we next have Cartman's Toys. In the episode 1%, Cartman's Toys get murdered. Clyde Frog is ripped up and nailed to a tree, Peter Panda is destroyed in a fire, and at Tolkien's house, Muscle Man Mark is boiled in a pot of water. Later, Rumper Tumskin is hung from shackles and his head explodes after Cartman trips on a wire triggering a bomb. It turns out that Polly Prissy Pants was the culprit as a means for Cartman to grow out of his toys and she dies from several gunshots to the head. This goes above our previous two entries because the body count is higher and the means in which the characters died are more gruesome. We bet you forgot Leslie Myers wasn't human, an important character throughout season 19. It's discovered by Jimmy that Leslie is actually a self-aware advertisement in human form. In the season finale, PC Principal Final Justice, PC Principal punches her in the face a few times before delivering one final massive punch through the head, revealing blue goo as her insides. Leslie's death left more of an impact because of her human appearance compared to the previous entries, which is why she's placed here. And that leads us to our next category, the off-screen deaths. While we don't see these deaths, they're still gruesome, and no character's looks are as gruesome as Diane chokes on dick. The episode, Professor Chaos, ended on a cliffhanger, spoiling that Miss Chokes on D would die in the following episode. Her cause of death remains a mystery, but the boys had put some of their sea people, brine shrimp, in her coffee as a joke. However, they thought they were culpable when it was discovered that some of Mr. Mackey's juice was inside her. Yeah, you get the wordplay. They found the semen. It's only a matter of time before they find the women, too. Regardless, this did not contribute to her death and because we don't know how she died, we're placing her here. Teaching the fourth grade at South Park Elementary must be a death sentence because Margaret Nelson also lost her life this way. In the South Park vaccination special, just as the boys came to the school to give Mrs. Nelson her COVID vaccine, she starts coughing uncontrollably and dies of COVID off screen, and a funeral is held for her in the next scene. Okay, now we're convinced that working for South Park Elementary is a bad omen since Veronica Crabtree kicked the bucket too. In Cartman's incredible gift, it's seen that the school's bus driver had been one of the victims of the left-hand murders, with multiple stab wounds and her left arm cut off. Even the bird that was always on her head was killed. Since we see her body, we're placing her here. To paraphrase Detective Murphy, at least she was an ancillary character the fans wouldn't miss much. Larry Feagan is one of the sadder deaths we'll be talking about today. In the episode Broadway Bro Down, a friendship forms between Shelley and Larry, and they later go see Wicked in Denver together. Wanting to save his daughter from the subliminal subtext behind the play, Randy interrupts the play dressed as Spider-Man. He accidentally breaks the theater's water pipes, making it flood, and the one time Larry doesn't wear his life vest, he drowns off screen. Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, is there such a thing as too much pampering? Paris Hilton's pets must have thought so. When Paris Hilton comes to South Park and stupid spoiled horror video playset, we do see one on-screen death, finding Paris insufferable or Chihuahua shoots itself in the head. Later in the episode, Butters discovers a photo album of all of her previous pets, a poodle that 
itself, a cat that cut itself, and another dog that committed seppuku. Because we see pictures of each of the bodies in pretty graphic detail, we're putting this one here. And that does it for that category. Our next category is the falling deaths. We only got one entry, so let's keep it short and sweet. And nothing says short and sweet like Miss Stevenson's tenure at South Park Elementary. In the episode, Miss Teacher Bits a Boy. Nice. Nice. What? Ike starts to have a relationship with his kindergarten teacher, Miss Stevenson. She later kidnaps him and they prepare to flee to Milan. When Cartman and the gang storm the hotel they're staying at, they take them to the roof where the two prepare to jump. Thankfully, after some coaxing, Ike fakes a jump while Miss Stevenson plummets to her death, splattering on the concrete. Next, we have the shooting deaths. We're gonna start with Terrence and Philip. In Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, when the kids try to convince Sheila to not kill Terrence and Philip, she snatches the general's gun and kills both of them with one shot to the head. We can't place this one any lower because of how fast they were killed, and hey, at least they come back to life at the end. But we can't say the same for Jack and Mrs. Tennerman. And Scott Tennerman must die, as revenge for scamming him out of money and humiliating him in public, Cartman lures Scott's parents to Mr. Dinkins' ranch, making them think his pony was abandoned. And of course, we're well aware that Cartman turns them into chili. While nowhere near as iconic, Glenn's fate is one of the more unfortunate ones. In the episode, Night of the Living Homeless, the townspeople that haven't succumbed to the town's homeless population flee to the roof of the community center. Glenn, a city council member, attempts to call his wife, who says that property values have gone down because of the homeless, causing the bank to foreclose. With Glenn now homeless, he starts to ask for change, causing Randy to blow his head off with a shotgun. Next is Wizard Allen. In the episode, Sexual Healing, scientists discover that the cause for all the men's harassing women is the result of the alien that crashed in Roswell having released a sex addiction virus. President Obama and a task force go to Independence Hall where the alien is located, and because he's also invisible, Obama comes to the conclusion that he's also a wizard. Kyle and Butters are chosen to help the task force to kill the creature, who in reality is just a soldier that fell out of line in a costume and are given guns. The boys shoot him several times, including in the legs and a few other times throughout his body. Funny enough, our final entry in this category also involved American firepower, and that's Osama bin Laden. And Osama bin Laden has farty pants. After the boys are freed from the terrorists by their Afghan counterparts, Cartman screws with them in a Bugs Bunny-style routine. What's up, bin Laden? Towards the end of the episode, he dresses bin Laden up in an Uncle Sam costume while holding a stick of dynamite, after which he's shot by a firing squad and blown up by the dynamite, with him being shot in the head for good measure. The next category are the stabbing deaths. These deaths tend to be slower, more painful, and much more graphic. However, our first entry, Woodsy Owl, died pretty fast, which is why his death is first. In In Sheepshin, Mr. Mackey, Stan, and a sheep herder are hooked up to a machine to figure out why they're hoarding. They're all taken into Mackey's childhood and his subconscious, and it's eventually discovered that he started hoarding because he had a bad experience with the anti pollution mascot himself, Woodsy Owl. After a small rampage, Freddy Krueger makes quick work of Woodsy by stabbing him in the chest with his claws. Next, we have WikiLeaks. In the episode, Bass to Mouth, Lemmy Winks' brother, WikiLeaks, gains access to the kids' private emails and phone calls and uses them to post embarrassing stories about them online. When the kids pit the rodents against each other to do battle, the two roll around until Lemmy Winks finishes his brother off with a bite to the jugular so sharp that appears to have nearly cut his head straight off. We're placing this here because it was more graphic and more drawn out than the previous entry. Drawn out? No. But Saddam Hussein's death was pretty damn graphic, especially by early South Park standards. In Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, after being shocked by Cartman's newly gained electrical powers, Saddam orders Satan to kill him in a condescending and insulting manner. Getting sick of all the abuse Satan had endured from Saddam, he throws him into a fiery pit, where he gets impaled by a stalagmite, with his ripped-off heart being seen on the tip. Speaking of Satan, he somehow died too. In the episode, Nobody Got Serial, Satan gets easily overpowered by Man Bear Pig in their battle, having one of his horns ripped off and stabbed right through his chest. If that wasn't enough, he gets punched in the face several times, dying slowly and coughing up blood while he gives his farewell to the boys. It's incredibly brutal, but he becomes an angel and ascends to heaven, so at least there was a happy ending. Moving on to crushing deaths. We begin with Jason White. 
In season finale, the boys are playing football in the park, and when Cartman aims the ball at Jason, the latter strays a bit too far into the street, where he's run over by a police car. To pour more salt into the wound, his funeral is open casket, and the tire marks can be seen on his face, clear as day. We've got far more gruesome deaths in this category, which is why this one is first. Not many people probably remember Jason, but we all remember Pip Pirrup in all the wrong ways. In the episode 201, as Mecha Streisand is making her rampage through town, Pip approaches her and politely asks her to stop. He is then unceremoniously squashed by her with nothing but a pile of blood and guts remaining. Fellow diehard fans can probably agree with us that he won't be missed. However, I think we can all agree the Antichrist would have been far worse had it had the chance to live. In Woodland Critter Christmas, Porcupiney the Porcupine gives birth to the Antichrist, and the critters use Kyle as a human host, so their lord and savior can rain terror upon the world. After the mountain lion cubs perform an abortion on Kyle to get the creature out, Santa then proceeds to take out a large hammer and crush it. If one tiny creature wasn't enough, how about a ton of Smurfs? In the aptly named Dances with Smurfs, Cartman details how he went to live with the Smurfs in an obviously fabricated story. It ends with Wendy, presented as Carmen in drag, drives a bulldozer into Smurf Village, running over them all and decapitating Smurfette with the blade. Since so many individuals were crushed at one time, plus the fact that Smurfette was decapitated, it's being placed here. Speaking of damage to the head, we have to mention Justin Bieber. During Cartman and Cthulhu's rampage in Coon vs. Coon and Friends, they make their stop at an arena where Justin Bieber is holding a concert. Cthulhu then proceeds to pick Bieber up and squeeze his head open, leaving his face nearly unrecognizable. This is our lowest entry in this category because nothing is probably as painful as two massive sharp claws from a large monster popping a head like a pimple. And that leads us to our final category, the cruelest deaths. These are the deaths that are gruesome beyond belief and really put the gore in category. Starting this category is Kristoff, nicknamed the Mole. In Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, Harmon is instructed by the Mole to turn off the alarm so he can free Terrence and Philip, but he runs away after he gets spooked by Kenny's ghost. Because of this, the Mole is spotted and guard dogs are sent after him. While it didn't show him getting mauled because he was inside the hole, he comes back out bloodied and bruised, and even coughs up blood. Finally, he slowly dies in Kyle's arms, probably very much in pain, while singing the reprise of La Resistance. And Betsy Donovan's death sure escalates things quickly. In the episode, Reverse Cowgirl, Clyde forgets to leave the toilet seat down, causing his mother, Betsy, to fall in. She also made it flush, creating a suction that's pulling out her insides. When the firefighters unclog the pipe, Betsy's insides get flushed down, killing her immediately, and we're greeted to an open casket funeral with her still inside the toilet in the next scene. One's internal organs being trapped in a pipe for a long duration of time just to be ripped out is far more painful than what happened in the previous entry, placing this one here. If you thought that was weird, that pales in comparison to Mr. Adler's girlfriend. In Tweak vs. Craig, Mr. Adler reminisces about a girlfriend he had in some very bizarre live-action flashbacks. It's revealed that she was a pilot and she went for a flight to give him a surprise. She died by drowning when her plane exploded, plunging it into the water. With drowning more instantaneous than the previous entry, there was likely less drawn-out suffering involved, which is why we're placing it here. Jambu and Tom Cruise's deaths were also pretty instantaneous. Because they died in the same manner, we're including them together. Jambu appeared in Free Wilsiak, where the boys see the orca perform at Denver Sea Park, and when Kyle sees him afterwards, the show hosts screw with them into making him think the whale can talk. He says to Kyle that his home is on the moon. This is amazing! But wait right here! I gotta go tell my friends about this! And if he isn't taken back, he would die. Jambu is successfully sent to the moon, where he's, unsurprisingly, seen dead at the end of the episode. At the end of 201, Tom Cruise, longing for a place where no one can make fun of him, is also sent to the moon and is seen dead right next to Jambu. At least he got his wish. Now we have Miss Ellen. In Tom's rhinoplasty, Miss Ellen comes in as a substitute for Mr. Garrison, and the boys are smitten by her. A jealous Wendy eventually goes through with an elaborate plan to hire Iraqi terrorists to steal Miss Ellen and have her shot in the middle of the sun. With the sun being super hot, Miss Ellen was most certainly burnt to a crisp, while Jambu and Tom Cruise's bodies were shown intact, making this death more gruesome. 
You're probably thinking, how can you get more gruesome than exploding into the sun? Well, Winnie the Pooh will show you how. In the episode Banned in China, Randy and Mickey Mouse try to reason with the Chinese government, with both their brands, Tegrity Farms and Disney respectively, are compromised in the country, all just because they're associated with Winnie the Pooh. To show the government they understand how they feel, Randy lures Pooh and Piglet into a dark alleyway with honey and strangles the former to death with a cable, causing blood to splatter out multiple times. As you'll see, the rest of our top five will follow a similar pattern, and this death is definitely the least gruesome of them all. South Park did Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey before it was cool, but how about Blood and Pee? Oh, that, that line should have stayed on the cutting room floor. In the meantime, let's look at Pee Pee. At the end of The Streaming Wars Part 2, Pee Pee is chased to the top of a water slide by Man Bear Pig, who then grabs a water park owner by the neck and slashes his head off, leaving his headless corpse floating down the slide. Because Pee Pee's death was instant and bloodier in comparison to Pooh's, it earns a spot outside the top three. The Bronze Medal of Gruesome goes to the three murderers. In the episode Hell on Earth 2006, Ted Bundy, John Wayne Gacy, and Jeffrey Dahmer are brought to Earth to bake a cake for Satan's Sweet 16 party. For my super sweet 16 Halloween party! They engage in very violent Three Stooges esque antics in their mission, which ultimately lead to their demise. When attempting to bake the cake, their antics lead to Bundy ripping out Gacy's eyes. Dahmer stabbing Bundy in the chest, Bundy cutting Dahmer's tongue off, Dahmer stabbing Bundy through the chin, and Gacy knocking out Dahmer so hard that his brains fall out. The scope of blood and organs involved and the fact that multiple people died gives these deaths the bronze medal of gruesome. A very similar situation involving a bunch of memes gets the silver medal of gruesome. In Canada on strike, after the boys make Butters a viral internet sensation, they wait in a waiting room in order to collect internet money and meet a few other memes. All the memes eventually start to argue over who's the most famous, and a brutal battle ensues. During the battle, the sneezing panda's mother mauls the Numa Numa guy, the Leave Britney Alone guy, and Tron guy, while Tay Zande shoots Star Wars Kid and the panda, after which Tay's head explodes from the dramatic look gopher, who is also killed by one last bullet. It all leaves behind one big gory mess, with the boys right in the middle of it. Because even more people and even a couple of animals died in an even bigger mess, this earns the silver medal of gruesome. Sweet, I think we're next in line now. You all saw this one coming, but the gold medal of gruesome goes to none other than Chef. In the episode The Return of Chef, the boys and Chef escape the super adventure club cult that he had joined. However, he's brainwashed enough for him to walk back across the bridge, just for lightning to strike the middle, leaving Chef hanging on for dear life on the cliff opposite the boys. A burning Chef then plummets down, hits a few rocks, and gets impaled in the chest from behind by a large root. He somehow survives, but is then ripped apart by a mountain lion and a grizzly bear, who leave him with his face, an arm, and a leg ripped off and his insides completely visible. While this may not be as gruesome as the previous two entries, we had to give this one the gold because of how sudden it was in the grand scheme of things, and there isn't a single